Hi, my name is Josh Zander. I'm the teaching professional at Stanford University Golf Course and host teaching professional for MySmart Golf. Today I want to talk about how to build a one-plane backswing. Before I talk about the details of how to build the one-plane backswing, let me just define what is meant by a one-plane swing. My mentor Jim Hardy came up with this term one-plane swing and I think it's been misinterpreted. A lot of people think that one plane means you're swinging the club on the same plane the whole time. That would be a very small short backswing and you could hit the ball okay that way. It just wouldn't go very far. What Jim Hardy means when he says one plane is that at the top of your backswing your left arm and shoulders are both on the same plane. They are both on one plane as opposed to the left arm being on a higher plane than the shoulders. That would be a two plane swing. So what we're trying to do is get to a top of the backswing where the left arm is on the same plane as the shoulder so they are both on one plane. Now in order to describe the one plane swing, the one plane backswing, I'm going to describe it in two positions. Position number one and position number two. Let's start with position number one. Position number one, I'm setting myself up a little more bent over than you would if you were a two-plane swinger, so you've got to be a little bit more bent from the waist. And then what you're going to do is you're going to connect your left arm to your chest and you're moving the shaft back to the parallel to the ground and parallel to the target line position. Notice at this point my left arm is across my chest, my right elbow is behind the seam of my shirt. Also notice that the club shaft is in line with my hands and it is parallel to the ground and parallel to the target line. Also notice the leading edge of the club face is at the same angle as my spine. If I stood up, that leading edge would be the same angle as my spine. That would actually be a square club face, slightly toe down. Let me show you that again. I connect my left arm to my chest, I pull my right elbow behind the seam of my shirt, and I have a perfect one plane takeaway. Let me show you that from face on. From face on, I want you to notice that my left arm is extended and my right elbow is actually away from my body. This keeps me nice and wide in my backswing, which is very important as a one planer to make sure you keep your width. So don't bend your elbow, which would in turn bend your left arm. Now I have two drills I like to do to help build this one plane backswing. The first one is what I call my wristwatch drill. So I'm going to get a hold of my left wrist, so grabbing hold of my wristwatch, and I'm simply going to pull my left arm into my chest. There I am. If I do that same thing with the club, pull my left wrist, and there I am into a nice one plane backswing position. Notice at this point, my left arm is the bottom arm and my right arm is the top arm. Another drill I like to do is what I call the dinner plate drill. You take your dinner plate and you simply put it at about the same angle your shaft would be. So let's just say it's about a 60 degree angle. And I'm just going to move this plate around me at the same angle. Notice how that plane is the same as a club shaft would be at address. Again, my left arm is the bottom arm, my right arm is the top arm. The mistakes I see with people making a one plane takeaway are rolling the arms back. Notice I'm disconnected. My club face is in the wrong position. I'm not parallel to the ground and target line. Also, excessive wrist cock. That's another mistake in a one plane swing. That made the club go too much to the outside. Another thing I see is standing up as you do this. So you want to maintain your posture and there we are in a nice one plane backswing position. That's position number one. Now let's move to position number two. Okay. Position number two of the one plane backswing is getting the club and your arms and your posture correctly at the top of the backswing. So remember, when we went to the one plane takeaway, we were right here. From this position, what I'm going to do is reach my club head as far back as I can and get my left arm, which we remember is the bottom arm, to become the top arm. Now my left arm, shoulders, and club are all on one plane, hence the term one plane backswing. Let me show you that again. So after I've gotten to here, I reach the club head back as if there were a wall back here, 
and get my left arm up and onto my shoulder plane. The way I did that was I made the left arm, which is currently the bottom arm, have it become the top arm. Notice the right arm becomes the bottom arm and that helps support the club at the top of the backswing. I'm going to show you a drill using the same dinner plate I used before. So remember, we got that dinner plate like this. The right arm was the top arm. Now imagine you had some food you didn't like on the plate and we're going to go ahead and toss the food over your shoulder. That gets the left arm up and onto the shoulder plane. So your left arm and your shoulders are both on one plane. That would be a correct top of the backswing position. Now the mistakes I see in the top of the backswing are people who get their club across the target line. Notice my right arm is still the top arm and my left arm is still the bottom arm. I had to reverse that. Once you get to here, now the left arm becomes the top arm and the right arm becomes the bottom arm. Another mistake I see is people who stand up out of their posture. Now you're in no position to be able to hit the ground. The next thing I see is people who don't have enough width at the top of their backswing. I'll show you that from here, where when they go to extend their arms to the top, they pull their arms in. We need to make sure that left arm is still nice and extended. The right elbow is no more than 90 degrees. If you can get it even more extended, that's great. Anything narrower than 90 degrees will not work for a one-plane backswing. So let me review this from the beginning. You have two positions you're trying to get through. Position number one and position number two. Now the reason I describe the one plane backswing in two positions is just to help you understand what needs to happen. But please remember that the one plane backswing is a fluid continuous motion. You're moving through these positions. So the way I would practice this, I would go position one, check that, that looks good. Position two, check that, that looks good and then try to blend that all into one motion. One motion there. Just like that. I do a lot of work in front of a mirror to make sure these positions are correct. You now have some checkpoints in order to build a fundamentally sound one plane backswing. For more information about your golf game and taking statistics online, please go to MySmartGolf.com.